Hey everybody, Scott Mann, founder and CEO of Stability Institute, where we broker knowledge and connect stability professionals on complex stability problems all over the world. And I appreciate you dialing in again today for one of our book reviews on stability television, or STAB TV as we call it. Uh, and this particular book review is the third book in a three book series that we've been talking about addressing local realities in undergoverned areas and the tradecraft that you need to overcome those local realities. Uh, the first two books that I talked about in, in, the, in the previous two book reviews were Rule of the Clan by Dr. Mark Weiner and The World Until Yesterday by Jared Diamond. And those two books were specifically brought forward to illustrate to all of you two very, very good books that will help you get your head around the traditional societies that, that we often find ourselves working in as stability professionals. Those two books were meant to set the stage for understanding and appreciating local realities. Well, this third book that I'm going to talk to you about today is designed to help address the tradecraft component of this. So if, if the first two were to help you get your head around local appreciation, the third book I'm going to talk to you about today is to really address the tradecraft that you need to operate uh, in these undergoverned areas. And the three books together, I tell you, I think are excellent tools to keep in your toolkit. And of course, the book that I'm talking about today is the New York Times bestseller, Getting More, by Professor Stuart Diamond of Wharton Business School and Penn Law. He teaches uh, the, the courses Getting More there. He's a world-class negotiator, travels all over the world. He's Google's uh, principal negotiator and, of course, a best-selling author of this particular book. Um, now, full disclosure, I, uh, I work with Professor Diamond in other venues outside of the Stability Institute on negotiating training, uh, but just want to make it real clear that I don't get any proceeds or revenue from book sales uh, promoting this book or any other. I'm simply telling you about uh, getting more right now because I think that it is probably uh, something that you'll really find useful when you operate in these undergoverned areas. Uh, in fact, I know it is. Uh, you see my book's pretty beat up right now. I carry this thing with me everywhere I go. Uh, and that's because the other thing I'll talk to you about is it's extremely applicable in every situation that you're going to face out there. Um, the other thing that I think is important to know is this book is one of 14 books that was recently selected by Admiral McRaven, commander of U.S. SOCOM, for the required reading list on, on the SOCOM reading list. Um, and so uh, not only is it a bestseller, but it's uh, one of the top rated books within the soft community uh, for professional reading. Um, also, we have, uh, we have conducted a, a, a ton of training in negotiations using this model. Uh, Professor Diamond has trained special operations folks, over 2,500 of them from the SEAL, Green Beret community, uh, even conventional soldiers on this model. And the reason that it resonates so strongly is that U.S. SOCOM, special ops, stability professionals are in over 90 countries around the world that are strategically at risk and undergoverned. And as we saw uh, in the books Rule of the Klan and The World Until Yesterday, these at risk, undergoverned countries really depend on traditional society to maintain some measure of stability in the outlying areas beyond the reach of the government. Traditional society, which is based on honor, revenge, hospitality, feuds, all of these components uh, that are critical to, to traditional society are essential to maintaining stability. And frankly, the models of best alternative to a negotiated agreement win-win, logic, power, coercion, these conventional models that have been used for years and that were invented by litigation attorneys are not relevant in, in these traditional societies, most of these traditional societies, where relationships and honor and hospitality all play a critical part. How you treat uh, folks in these societies is critical to the type of transactions that you achieve. Relax relationships in front of transactions are everything. So this model, uh, or the models that we've seen to date, uh, the conventional models, really are not relevant in these areas. Uh, and 
our guys are telling us this every day. We see this every day as they come back off the battlefield in these undergoverned areas and give us feedback uh, on the negotiations, uh, applications of these tough areas. The getting more approach that's in this book, uh, Professor Diamond has worked on this for 25 years with over 30,000 people from 50 different countries. Uh, and it's, it's a model for all human interactions uh, that simply puts forward uh, anyone uh, reading this book and applying these tools will be capable of getting more in their relationships and the negotiations of their daily life, whether it's negotiating a pizza, uh, a discount in a store, or trying to convince a rural Afghan farmer to try a new agricultural technique. The process for negotiations is essentially the same. The fact patterns change. The, the model that Professor Diamond puts in his book uh, really gets away from the conventional approach of win-win and leverage and power. And what it focuses on is valuing the person's emotions, the person's perceptions, the pictures in their head, and the things that really matter to them. And, and what, what, what he asserts in this book is that if you do that, you're going to get four times as much value than if you follow these conventional methods. And that's a lot of value, whether you're negotiating a pizza, a discount on a car, or again, trying to achieve some kind of transactional event in a tribal society. Um, that four times as much value is worth the effort. Um, so what you're going to find in the book uh, are a set of tools, uh, 12 of them to be exact, that he lays out for you in a very logical way and then, and then constructs them in a four quadrant model that will help you engage in negotiations in any situation. Some of the tools that are in the book, uh, for example, are goals. Uh, he, he, uh, he, he makes it very clear that goals are paramount in any negotiation. And, you know, he encourages you to ask yourself, are my actions meeting my goals? And I'll tell you, this is a lost art, in, I think, not just in negotiations, but any human interaction. Often, we get off track and we lose sight of what our goals are. And we let our own emotions and our own biases get in the way and detract us from achieving our goals in the negotiation. So he really puts a lot of emphasis on this and gives you a, a range of ways to identify and think about your goals when conducting negotiations. Another thing that, another tool that he puts forward here is that it's about them. Uh, it's really, really about them and your ability to uh, ascertain the pictures in their head to determine what's going on between their ears and, and, and to value that and to demonstrate that you value that is extremely, extremely powerful. Uh, certainly in tribal society, clan society, traditional society, where relationships and honor are paramount, uh, valuing the other person and, 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 and showing that externally can go a long way which is a segue into another tool that he uses that I really have to make sure I talk about here. And this is the notion of emotional payments. Uh, you know, in many of the traditional societies where we operate, emotional payments are critical to daily life. If you remember the vignette I told you about in the last book report, uh, or the book review, where we talked about the world until yesterday. And Jared Diamond, the author of that book, talks about the small child that was killed in the car accident inadvertently. Uh, by a driver and that driver's boss uh, went to the wake uh, where he, he knew that if he didn't intervene in some way that there would be uh, revenge, uh, even a, a tribal war uh, to, exa to exact uh, payment, to exact revenge for the death uh, for, of, of that child. And so at that wake he presented essentially blood money to the, to the father and to the family of that young boy. But what was more important was the emotional payment that he made when he presented that money. When he looked that father in the eye and in front of all those people said, this money will never be able to replace the loss of your son. Um, but I hope that you'll accept my sincere apologies uh, on behalf of my company and my people. And he made an atonement for the death of that child in front of all those people. He made an emotional payment that frankly restored the relationship and it restored order and stability to that society and that's everything. And so when we operate in these areas, the restoration of relationships, the resolution of conflict often comes from the ability to make emotional payments like this. And a lot of times it doesn't even resonate with us 
because of our society of contract mentality and Western biases. So again, I spent a little bit of time on that particular tool, but it's so important in societies of status. And there's a whole bunch of other tools in here that you'll find that you can put in your kit bag on this thing. Um, we've used this, again, or Professor Diamond has used this to train over 2,500 operators. Um, and what we keep hearing back is that it has a lot of application uh, outside of societies of status. It's also very relevant uh, when dealing with chain of command or commander or supervisor issues. Even if you're talking to your wife uh, about, or your husband, about uh, you know, time in service and deployments and what your next steps are, getting your kids to listen. Uh, all interactions really benefit from this approach because frankly we're not that far removed from societies of status and clan society where how we treat people really matters. In fact, I think if you probably hearken back to a negotiation you had where the other party didn't treat you so well, regardless of the outcome of that negotiation, you probably view that person differently than when you went into that negotiation. And I bet you, if you were in a negotiation with that person again, you would probably go into it with your guard up. Uh, and regardless of what the content of the negotiation was, what the technical substance was, you were, it was really about how you treated each other. And Professor Diamond's research clearly shows that 90% of negotiations are about how the parties treat each other and the process they use. And only about 10% is really about the substance. So you see, regardless of, of the negotiations that you're in in your life, uh, this process will apply and it will help you. Okay, so as we wrap up here, I just want to give out some contact information so that you can learn more about Professor Diamond's book and the training that he provides. So if you just go to www.gettingmore.com, you'll find everything you need to know there. Now, if you also have questions about negotiations in the stability context, you can contact us at www.stabilityinstitute.com. Click on the big red Ask the Institute button and fire away with your question. It'll come right to us and we'll get you an answer very quickly. Uh, for this particular book review, I do request that you share this with as many folks as you can. Share it on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, all the other social media accounts that you have out there. And if you haven't joined the Stability Institute yet, I really want to encourage you to join us. It's a great community. It's a collaborative community at a grassroots level of folks that are out there really sticking and moving on these issues. Um, so if you just go to the new members tab, click on that, fill out the very short application. Tell us kind of what your interests are and, 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 and where you work uh, because it'll give us some insights on how to, how to tailor further content for you and things like that. Uh, but please join us because the community is growing uh, and the more we grow, the more we're able to sustain the message, grow the message, and bring you the kind of content that you're looking for. So I hope this video served you. I appreciate all that you do out there, and I, and I look forward to seeing you next time on Stability Television. I'm Scott Mann, CEO and founder of the Stability Institute, and thanks for watching.